the method of partial fractions from first term calculus uh, is used to factor uh, rational functions by breaking them up into pieces that are easy to integrate, uh, namely the partial fractions. And the similar trick works for finding coefficients of generating functions. Uh, if I have a generating function h of x that's a rational function, that is, it's a quotient of polynomials, uh, then there's a simple way for me to find its nth coefficient. That is, the hn is the coefficient of x to the n and h of x. Let's suppose that h of x is p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomials, and I'm trying to find the nth coefficient of p of x over q of x. I'm going to break up the quotient p of x over q of x into partial fractions. Let's do an example to illustrate that, and then we'll formulate it more generally. Suppose that h of x is this quotient. The numerator polynomial is x. The denominator polynomial is 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Well, the first step is to factor the denominator. Now, you usually factor the denominator into terms of the form x minus a root uh, time, and the whole thing times a constant. But I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. Well, I could still find these numbers by from the quadratic formula. But I'm going to factor the denominator as 1 minus 2x times 1 minus x. And you can check that that's right. So that's the factor denominator and the factor numerator. And then the next thing I'm going to do is break up this quotient um, into uh, a sum of terms of the form a constant over 1 minus 2x plus a con another constant a2 over 1 minus x. So because these two factors are different, and if in general there were lots more factors, I can break it up, break up this uh, uh, f this quotient, I can re-express it as a sum of terms of this form, um, where I have to figure out what the constants a1 and a2 are. But I know that that's the, gen the generating function has this shape. OK, what does that tell us? Well, once I've expressed h of x as a1 over 1 minus 2x plus a2 over 1 minus x, I know exactly what the form of the nth coefficient of h of x is because I get it as the, the sum of the coefficient of the nth coefficient of this generating function and the, co and the nth coefficient of that generating function. In other words, it's going to be a1 times the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus 2x plus a2 times the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus x. So the nth coefficient of a2 over 1 minus x is, the, is this thing, a2 times the nth coefficient of 1 over x. Likewise here, I'm just factoring out the a1 and looking at the nth coefficient of 1 minus 2x, then multiplying it by a1. So this is exactly what the form of the nth coefficient of h of x is going to be. It's the sum of those two things. But what else do I know? Well, I know that the nth coefficient of 1 over 1 minus 2x is 2 to the n, because we figured that out already. Um, when I have a term of the form 1 over uh, alpha x to the kth power, um, I know what its nth coefficient is. Likewise, of course, the nth coefficient of this is just 1, because it's that old familiar geometric series. So altogether, what we've just figured out is that the nth coefficient of my quotient h of x is a1 times 2 to the n plus a2 times 1. And all I have to do is figure out what are a1 and a2. Well, that's not too hard to do because the way that I defined a1 and a2 is they were supposed to be constants so that this equality held. This was h of x in factored form, and it's supposed to equal a1 over 1 minus 2x plus a2 over 1 minus x. How to find a1 minus, uh, and a2? Well, this identity holds for all x. So the first thing we can do is just simplify to get rid of the quotients by multiplying through by uh, this messy denominator. When I do that, uh, what I wind up with is that x is equal to a1 times 1 minus x and a2 times 1 minus 2x. And again, this is an identity that is supposed to hold for all x. And that will enable me to solve for a1 and a2 very easily by judicious choice of x. Namely, um, when I'm trying to find out what a1 is, the obvious thing to do is to substitute a half for x. And when I'm trying to find out what a2 is, the obvious thing to do is to substitute 1 for x, which will make this term 0. So let's do that first. If I substitute 1 for x, this term goes away. And what I discover is that um, 1, which is the left-hand side, is equal to a2 times 1 minus 2, which immediately tells me that a2 is minus 1. Likewise, if I substitute x to be a half, 
then what I get is that a half is equal to a1 times 1 minus a half. This term is 0. And that tells me immediately that a1 is 1. And I've solved for the nth coefficient of my quotient h of x. The nth coefficient is simply 2 to the n minus 1. Now, there's just two uh, uh, points to, uh, to make, two warnings, caveats, about generalizing this method uh, to an arbitrary quotient. The, the step is that you take the denominator and factor it into four, uh, terms of the form uh, 1 over 1 minus alpha x, except that if you get a multiple root, if you have a root with multiplicity k greater than 1, then the, the, what's going to happen is you're going to wind up in the denominator with a product of terms of the form 1 minus alpha x to the kth power. And when you have a repeated factor like that to the kth power, then you have to uh, expand in partial fractions uh, where you're looking at constants a1 through ak over every possible power of 1 minus alpha x, of 1 minus alpha x to the first, 1 minus alpha x to the second, 1 minus alpha x to the k. So that's what the kind of expansion that you have to find when you have a, a root of, of that multiplicity. Fortunately, that even though in the general partial fraction expansion of a quotient, you're going to wind up with these terms of the form a, a, a constant a over 1 minus alpha x to the kth power, we definitely know the coefficient of the nth coefficient of this term, because we've worked that out already. It's simply a times n plus k minus 1 choose n times alpha to the n. So terms like this needn't scare us. We can handle them. We know what their coefficient is going to be. We just have to solve for the a, for the numerator constants a. The second uh, point that you need to be aware about, about applying the partial fraction method uh, in general to a quotient of polynomials is that it only is going to work if the numerator uh, has lower degree than the denominator. So if you have a a, 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 a rational function n of x over d of x, numerator of x over denominator of x. Um, if you happen to have a, a that the degree of the numerator is greater than the d degree of the domina uh, denominator, then what you do is just do polynomial long division so that you wind up with a quotient and a remainder where f of x is q of x plus r of x over d of x, where the degree of r is less than the degree of d. It's just standard polynomial multiplication. And that means that r of x over d of x will fall to the method of partial fractions. And then you just add in a simple polynomial q of x. Um, and that enables you to find the coefficients easily enough of an arbitrary rational function using the method of partial fractions.